When they first start shooting, you know, when person first walks out in, in their costumes, if it works, you feel great. If it doesn't work, you don't feel so great. In this particular case, thank God, it, it seemed to work very well. And we took a lot of chances. I mean, we stylized a great deal. When I imagined the kind of films I was thinking of, I wanted it to be kind of, you know, sparkling. I really tried to avoid any kind of direct aesthetic associations with the original Ocean's Eleven. Those guys were the epitome of cool, and none of us wanted to compare ourselves to them. You can't beat that, so we took a completely different tact. We wanted to show Las Vegas as a heightened Las Vegas, not Las Vegas as it is now, but the Las Vegas that we all wish it was. It's just guys the banter, bringing down the casino, a nice suit here and there. There is a famous photograph taken by Sid Avery of the original cast of Ocean's Eleven, and we thought it would be fun to recreate that photograph and have Sid Avery come and do it. is it is not just clothing. Clothing is clothing, costumes are costumes. Costumes do something else. Clothing is to cover yourself. Costumes tell a story, just like a script tells a story. Costumes are created specifically for a character as opposed to clothing, which is created for people to wear. Each garment, each costume, hopefully says something about that character, that particular scene they're in, and is working to further along a story, just like words are, actions are, and everything else. It's never off the rack on someone, shoot it. I, I don't think any costume designer works like that. Basically, to put Brad Pitt in clothes, how hard is it to make Brad Pitt look good? It's not, you know what I mean? He just does. But building a character with clothing, or helping to build a character with clothing. You're out, Danny. He's out? It's that or we call the whole thing off. The costumes take on a life of their own, and to see that happen, it's extremely gratifying. Rusty Ryan's character is a fashionista, shall we say. Roll sound. He was this guy who was teaching you know, young movie stars how to play poker. I mean, he was in a group where his clothing could be slightly over the top, and the colors were definitely there. And they were always very shiny and very reflective. And the fabrics I used always gave a sheen back. And there was a glow that came from them. He shines, he does. And his clothes are very fitted to his body, like racer-like almost. There's a good deal of speed. Everything about him is quick, it's fast. His wit is fast, his speech is fast, as you see him in the film. He changes quickly, he does things quickly, he gets it all together. God, I'm bored. You look bored. I am bored. Brad's fittings took hours and hours. Not because it was difficult, but because he was so interested in every nuance of the clothing and how it made him feel as a character and what I could do. And I was interested in what he had to say. And so those fittings were great because we learned so much about each one of our crafts. He knew better where he was going to go, and I knew how better to do my job. I think as far as clothing helping the performance, I think it helps a great deal. Um, I had sent Carl Reiner his sketches because it gave him an idea where I was going before I did a fitting. And he called me, and he he said, well, you've given me the character. I know exactly where I'm going. Yeah, I mean, he just looked at the drawings and he knew, you know, where he wanted to go. A guy who wears Hawaiian shirts and stained hats and East Rolades, they dress him up in the most elegant clothes he's ever. This is one set of, look at these with the fob and the and with, with glasses. And the same thing with Elliot Gould and so many of the guys. Chick or treat. Or did you guys get a group rate or something? Danny Ocean's character is a very classic character. He is the glue that holds it all together, and I kept him in a very solid kind of style. And the colors were also very much that way. They were darks and lights, uh, sometimes whites, but mostly usually pale grays to certain colors also. There are some jokes that come up because of costume design. For instance, I don't think in the script George walks out of prison the first time wearing a tuxedo, which he does now. So that recurring joke of he keeps on walking out of prison in a tuxedo just came out of Stephen and Jeffrey and George. Our thought was is that he was arrested for jumping bail once again, and he was taken straight to prison, and the suit they took him to prison in was his tuxedo. And then we end it the same way, because you see him be taken from the Bellagio straight in the police car. He's taken back to jail. And so he's in another tuxedo. Um, 
those are chances we took visually that I think work and they add to the character and they add to the interest. You know, when you first see it, they go, whoa, this, this could be interesting. And he walks out in the cold with the collar up on a tuxedo and, the, and you immediately set up the cool and the, you know, the certain style of both George's character as Danny and the movie because it all radiates from him. That's where it starts. I mean, you see him come up the escalator in the, in the first casino. You see his shoulders end to his legs and then he walks off and he's styling. Terry Benedict, as played by Andy Garcia, is a very interesting character because you could easily say, oh, he's the bad guy, let's just do him as the bad guy. He's the devil. Well, he's the enemy. That's in the eye of the beholder. Rat. Obviously, this woman, Tess Ocean, sees something in him. Amazing, isn't it? You have to balance him against Danny Ocean. It's the same woman went for both these guys. There's got to be, as much as there are differences, there's got to be some similarities. So there's a certain coolness to him and, and power to him that you want to, to express. We decided that there was a certain Eastern quality to him, that he had to have a center, that it had to come from someplace, this cool. I had thought that a certain Zen quality or, or you know, an Asian feel to some of his things would take the edge off of, quote unquote, the evil. And, and so I incorporated it into the clothing. And, and also, in the demolition, you see the model that they're standing in front of, of the new hotel that he's going to erect. is a very Asian-looking hotel. And you see in his vest and the cut of his clothes, the cut of his tuxedo is Western in fit, but it's built like a kimono. It has no buttons down the front, and it's rather solidly on him by itself. So there's a real kind of like <gasps> zen cool with that character. Pick him up. Ah. We only have one lady in our film, and we were lucky enough to have it be Julia Roberts. So um, the character of Tess Ocean is more complicated than one might think because she's intelligent, yet she's also the girlfriend and live-in of the most powerful man in Las Vegas. There's a part of her that is beholden to this man. So a certain amount of his taste is shown in her clothing also. So you're dealing with her taste, his taste, East Coast, Las Vegas, all of this coming together to form the physicality of her clothing. It's been fun. It's kind of like a glamorous part, which I'm not really used to being so dressed up all the time and the jewelry and the gowns and the shoes and the whole nine yards. Jeffrey made everything, so that's been kind of like, it's my own personal Barbie playhouse. Matt Damon's character is inexperienced, young, eager, anxious, brash, all those things incorporated into a set of costumes. So I dressed him as a college student. Design for costumes has a great deal to do with the actor. So of course the actor has something to say about what they're wearing, because they're creating the character. You don't want the clothes to wear them, you want them to wear the clothes as the character. So of course, all actors have input as to what they, they feel about and how comfortable they are as the character in the, in the clothing. And of course, as you draw, you think of that person and kind of style the character physically around the physical attributes of the actual person. But the character is the character character will always remain the character, and these actors were playing characters and happy to play them. And so in other words, I don't think they had a great desire to wear clothing that they necessarily liked. I think they wanted to play the character. I hope you were the groom. Ted Nugent called, he wants your shirt back. Those lines actually grew out of the moment and out of the clothes, strangely enough. They just came up with it. I mean, that's those guys. I mean, they're quick. I mean, they're, they're, they're funny and they're quick. Yeah.